Hello! Welcome back to the Model Frontier. We are now live. We now have pack three of Agora Models Build the Titanic. If you're new to my channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a second of any of my great content. Last issue, we actually assembled the starboard side of the hull and we did some more work on our forecastle section. We mainly did the anchor chain area. Today is a very special part of the build because number one, we actually get six stages instead of just four. So we're going to have a lot of stuff to do. We're going to be bringing our two halves of the hull together and actually attaching them and adding some parts of the keel underneath. We're going to do some work on the Ford well deck. We're going to build our first funnel. And we're going to start building the structures that are going to go on top of the ship on the boat deck. So that's going to require a lot of work and a lot of mods, which I've already prepared ahead of time so we can get right into it but I've also thought you know we can do something other than just have these be a series of videos on how to build this model we could actually learn a thing or two about the Titanic together as we take this two-year journey through building this model to that end I've decided to incorporate a new feature I'm calling Titanic trivia four times per episode I'm going to pose questions about the Titanic. These can be anything from multiple choice, true, false. They'll deal with things like things dealing with specific passengers, information about the night of the sinking, um, some numbers based on you know how big things were or what was damaged and things like that. And hopefully doing that we can learn a thing or two and have some fun with it. And it'll be good. It'll be good. So the way it'll work is I'll pose one question before we start our build and then you will get two stages to answer that question before I give you the answer. And at the end of the video I'll pose a hard question that I'll answer at the beginning of our next video. So that question won't be something you could just easily know. You're going to have to put some effort in if you want to. Or you can just wait till the next video to get the answer. So before we begin this part of the build, your first question on Titanic Trivia is, How large an area in feet or meters of the hull was damaged? Was it A, 12 feet or 1 meter, B, 20 feet or 2 meters, or C, 70 feet or seven meters your answer will come after we complete stage 10 so without further ado are you ready to go back to Titanic so before we get started and give you guys a chance to actually find the answer to that question uh, we did get two things in here that you're not going to find in the instructions they're basically new parts for the stock forecastle and some parts for the stock well deck um i'm going to show you these first because some of you are going to be doing the stock model obviously we do issue 13 in this section so we don't need these ones so let's take a look at what we get with this pack for issue one so obviously we're getting some color the right color breakwaters uh, we're getting some new capstans which are they're gray with the bronze top so that's pretty cool and we're getting these bronze uh, vent these bronze uh, what I don't know what these are for to be honest but they're bronze now it's they're bronze now instead of being all white so if you're doing this model stock it's basically just a matter of taking the parts that you have out and replacing them with the new ones. Um, so we'll do the. So I mean, obviously, you'll take the breakwaters and you'd replace them like that. Okay. 
and you would just replace all the parts and they'll look a little closer to accurate so I mean for me they're not totally accurate like the capstan should either be black or they should either be black or green depending on your view of it but I mean when you compare it to the originals When you compare them against the originals, it does look a little closer to accurate. So, good job, Agora Diagostini, on doing that for us. Obviously, I'm not going to show you. Do, I'm not going to do this all right now. I'm just this just to show you that can be done. Let's go get our parts for stage nine, and let's get started on the main part of the model. So here's all the parts we get in stage nine, and it looks like a lot, but. These parts, which are basically the cleats, uh, we're not using these yet. Uh, I believe these are going to go on once we put the forecastle on, because if you look at where they go, they're going to cover the screw holes of the forecastle deck. So these we can set aside. The parts we're going to need are all these here. We also, of course, need our two halves of the hull, because we're going to actually put the hull together. So... The first part we're going to need is our starboard side. So we got a bracer piece here that we got to put on. So obviously the first thing we're going to want to do, we're going to have to do is drill the holes out if you're adding the windows in. So you go so we'll go ahead and do that and then we'll come back and we'll add this in. So here's our first uh, step for this part and we're just going to add a bracer to the starboard side of the hull. Um, I've already drilled out the holes there for my four windows here that you that I've drilled out. Uh, if you didn't drill them out, you don't need to do that. What we're going to do is flip this over. These pieces are going to kind of line up and they kind of clip into place there. And then we're going to secure it down uh, with five AM screws. Right in the right in the line there, all those holes. Now we got those in there nice and tight as all you also got to make sure that the this flat part just like on the port side is towards the bottom now as you might imagine our next step is we're going to take the other part of the prow here and we're going to attach it to the hull Once again, there's a couple of tabs in there to help you guide it. And it's going to secure here and here with two more AM screws. Got that on nice and tight. Now we get to do this fun part of bringing the two halves of the hull together. So first we got these two pieces here. These are bracer pieces. And you're going to put them into two places on your hull. I believe, let's take a look. On the starboard side of your hull. So on this part of your hull, you're going to put this longer one into the middle. You put the shorter one in the front here. And this longer one is going to go to this middle one right here like that 
I'm going to bring our two halves over, fit them together. And this is a tricky one. This is not going to be for the easy of us, but once we get them fitted together, the bracers do not go into anything on the port side. They just kind of hold it in place. Once we get that together, we're going to secure it from the port side. No, the starboard side. We're going to secure it from the starboard side. And these four holes here with AM screws. Once those are tightly in there, the bow section is together. And now, if you remember this from stage eight, well now, the hole will stand on it. Now your hull will stand on it. It's a little rickety, but it works. And you could also put your forecastle on so you can finally get an idea of what this forecastle looks like. Looks really nice, doesn't it? And with that, we are done with stage nine. So stage 10 is giving us a lot of details for our engine. Now these are these are pushed to fit, but if they do get loose, uh, if they do feel loose, or if you just want the extra um, security, you're more than free to use glue on these. I personally want these to be secure, so I am going to be using some glue. So with our engine facing this direction, um, the easiest way to tell is these should all be going forward. Um, we're going to start with these two with these two cogs here. The first one we're looking at is this big one. You've got a little tab there and it's going to go into there um, into these two tabs. Now it is push to fit, but again, I am I do prefer to be a little secure with mine. So and since these do not move, I'm just going to put a little dab of glue on these. And now the, and now like I say, this uh, this tab here that's facing up needs to face towards the back, and then you'll get it to fit in there. Like that. Now this other one that doesn't have a tab or any kind of identifying mark it's going to go on this hole and again I am going to put a little bit of glue on it just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere and all I'm putting glue on is the little tabs here I'm only putting some glue right on the ends of those And then those are in place. So next we're going to focus on this one here, on this section here. And for that we're going to need one of these and one of these parts. And just like with the, um, just like with this one, you got a tab, it's going to go towards the back. 
and then this is going to go on there. So I'm going to get the glue on these and we're going to glue these down. Now that we're doing the back one, of course they love to twist it up on us because it, obviously this one's facing a different direction. So this time the tab is going to go towards, is going to go the opposite way. So it's going to be going this way. And then this piece is also going to follow the curve. And of course again, I'm going to be gluing these on. And just so you know, the tabs, one is bigger than the other, so if you ever, if it's not going in right, it, you're putting it in the wrong way, because it can only go in one way. those are in the last thing we have is we've got these these exhaust valves and they all go into the center of these parts here Once we got those in, that's it for the engine. Um, so nothing mechanical, like our engine will still do what it's supposed to do. That's just adding a bit more detail to your engine, making it look nicer. We're not quite done with issue with this stage yet because we gotta add another piece to our hull. So let's go get that and meet back here. So now we got this piece of the keel section right here that we're going to add on to the main hull and it's very there's five points we got to make sure we get it into I don't know if you're going to be able to see it there but um one two three four and five and that's going to be secured down with five of the HM screws I'm stopping there for a second to show this hole here this is a far in there hole that is going to be very tricky so that's why you might have noticed I did these four first because that one is going to be very difficult to get to you're going to need a very thin screwdriver um, you probably I would highly recommend dipping your screw in oil for sure on this because you're gonna you might have to cut through the paint and then you're gonna kind of have to come in it from this part to get it in there and then of course you want to make sure you get it nice and tight once you do there we go we've got the keel of our ship on we're starting to, we're definitely starting to go out now, and that is it for that stage. However, before we go on to our next stage, let's look at our question for the first part of Titanic Trivia. How large an area in feet or meters of the hull was damaged? 
Was it A, 12 feet or 1 meter, B, 20 feet or 2 meters, or was it C, 70 feet or 7 meters? The answer is A, 12 feet or 1 meter. That one was pretty easy, but I thought I'd throw you an easy one to start off with. Now with that done, let's go on to stage 11. So as you can see, stage 11 is going to be focusing on the iconic Ford funnel. Um, this is the funnel that everyone thinks of when they think of the Titanic. It's the one that everyone shows falling over. Well, not everyone, but it's the big one that people think of. And it's iconic, and it needs to be done. So we're doing that next. But before we do, our second question for Titanic trivia... How high in feet or meters was the Titanic from her keel to the top of her funnels? Was it A, 100 feet or 30 meters? B, 150 feet or 46 meters? C, 175 feet or 53 meters? Or was it D, 200 feet or 61 meters? The answer will be at the end of stage 12. So now before we start the funnel, there is one more part you're going to need to get, and that's this piece. Um, you may remember getting this from stage 8. Um, it's the smoke generator. I believe it was 8. It was in pack 2, that's for sure. Um, but it is the smoke generator, and we are going to need it. So you're going to definitely want to get this, because you are going to need it for this part. So to begin putting the funnel together, we are going to take this spring and we're going to put it into the filter. Um, there is no direction on the filter, so you're just going to kind of poke it in um, on either end of the filter. Push it down. There we go. Now once we got the filter, the spring into the filter, next we're going to take the tank which is this, and we're going to feed it in spring side down. You'll know you'll have it right because a part of the tank is going to be sticking out of the filter. Now we're setting that aside because now we need this part. Um, I believe we got this back in pack two. Yeah, we got this back in stage eight. And now we're going to use it to do more than just testing to see that it works. We're going to actually put it into the housing. So we're going to take our we're going to take our um, smoke generator, and with the wire facing up, so not like this, like you might want to do, this way facing up, you're going to feed it. You're going to put it into this piece. You'll notice this piece has a little notch right there. So obviously the wire is going to go in that notch like that and now we're going to take this piece of the housing here and we're going to join them together so the wire's sticking out still and we're going to secure that down with a pair of EP screws Okay, and now we got that in place, we're going to take our tank and we're going to put it in this way. So you're going to fit this end into the hole here and push it till it goes in. So now that, now that that piece is all in, we're going to move on from this onto the main part of the funnel. So here's the main part of our funnel, and I'm going to address a few things with this. Um, so, first of all, the color on this is not the correct color. Um, the Titanic's funnels were not an orange. They were a 
they were considered white star buff, which is basically like a flesh tone. Um, I just used like a flesh tinted paint on this to make it look the way it does. So that's the color it should be. Also, I want to state right now, I was going to attempt to do this funnel using the funnel wraps from Woody's Model Works. Um, this is the first funnel wrap. It's very thin, so it's very workable. Um, the rivets are actually more correct than the ones on this one. I mean, this one does have the rivets on it, so it does look good. But these ones are factually correct. And I will admit that this piece will, to a degree, work on here. It'll work insofar as it will wrap all the way around the part. However, in so doing, you would be covering all of these holes that are needed for other things. So unless you're going to drill those out or mark them off or somehow denote these parts, this is not going to work for you. Also, if I pull this piece over for a minute, you can see that the riveting, the riveting on this, while not wholly correct, while not correct, it does match the riveting pattern on this part. So, um, Woody's Model Works does do the black pattern as well, um, which means if you were going to do this, you would have to basically sand this off sand this smooth and then wrap it with this which again uh, would work um, and there's far fewer holes that you would have to worry about with that but it's basically depending it basically depends on your skill level what you think you can accomplish and what you're comfortable doing if you're comfortable with you know wrapping this around and making it you know fit and everything then you're gonna end up with a much you're gonna end up with a much more accurate um, representation of the funnels I am NOT quite at that level with my abilities yet um, I think it will it will lead me to have problems down the road if I try to do this so I'm actually gonna stick to the kit funnels and just paint them the buff color which I kind of like the look of anyway with the orange underneath because you can see um, it kind of looks a little more Titanic like it's got that right level of orange undertone to it so I do like this better um, these are definitely worth it though Woody's Model Works definitely did a good job I don't know what I'm gonna do with these I may put them for um, for sale on my on the Facebook group so um, Woody's Model Works if you're game for trying something this is it now with that little segue out of the way let's do this funnel so you're basically gonna take this piece here you're gonna bait the funnel you're gonna put upside down now how do you tell which way is upside down simple the up part is this is the surface where it's flat the part that's gonna be down is this part where it's not so I'm gonna put this upside down and then you're gonna slide this part of the funnel into the piece here now this is where it gets tricky because you're gonna have to line up these holes here with the screw holes here um, the easiest way you're gonna find to do that is you need to get in some light and you're gonna probably want to choose one side to start with um, whichever way you go we're gonna screw it down with three of these very tiny DP screws and you're gonna screw it down in the second hole here, this middle hole, and the bottom hole. My best advice would be to pick a side, line it up. 
I would screw in the middle one first, and then the rest will fall into place. So let's get this done. And when I warn you these screws are tiny, I mean they are tiny. I mean, look at those things. They are really little. Your regular um, PHO screwdriver, it may work and it may not. I don't want to take any chances because there's like no margin for error here. So I'm going to go for this particular one with a manual. I think PH00 will work good on this. Yeah, I'm going to use a good PH00 with a nice magnet clip or tip. Once we got those first three in, we're going to have to pull this tight to get these next three in. There we go. Now we got those in place. We're gonna set this part aside. We're gonna bring over the funnel top. And the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to put what's known as the stay collar on here. Now, it is directional. You have two grooves in here. One's wider than the other. You have two tabs in here. One is wider than the other one. And all we're gonna do is slide that down into place. Now, you will note, in the next you'll note one thing. In the funnel here, we've got a square hole. So we have, so, You'll notice we have this square hole here at the base of the funnel. We're going to take the water tank we built and feed the wire through the hole before we set the tank into the funnel.
Actually, I'm wrong. We f need to first feed the tank through the top of the funnel, then we feed the wire through the bottom. Once we get the wire out of the bottom, we put the rest of the tank into the funnel. Once that's in place, the last thing we need to do is put this grating piece on top. Now, in this grating, there are grooves on each side, and inside the top of the funnel, there's these tabs. Pretty self-explanatory, really. Match the tabs to the grooves, and there you go. Now, this is very important. Do not glue this part down. We'll still need to get into the funnel, and trust me, you don't want to make your life harder by gluing it. So to make sure we don't lose this part, we're just going to put a piece of masking tape over it, going side to side like this. And with that, we've finished the first funnel, and we've also finished stage 11. Now for stage 12, we're working on the Ford well deck, and we got to talk about this because this is going to be an issue. So you can see the piece they give you does fit on there perfectly. But when we compare it to the MK1 kit, uh-oh, it's not big enough. But that's not going to be a real problem because if we look at where this is going to go, You're basically going to have a little bit of overhang in the front, oh, sorry, in this front section here, which is where the sea deck bulkhead goes between the well deck and the forecastle. And then back here, you're going to have these two holes, which are sea deck wall, which is going to be where the sea deck wall goes in. So basically everything from here back is going to be covered. So you're not going to see it. So even though it doesn't fit all the way, we're going to work on that. We're going to work with it. So how we're going to stick this on is we're going to use this inner curve on either side here, and we're going to match it with the curve here and here. Now, unlike the forecastle, there's this is a smooth piece, so there's nothing we have to shave off. So that's a good thing. So now just like what we did for the well deck, I'm using this Gorilla Wood Glue, or what we did for the forecast, I should say, and we're just going to paint on a layer of this stuff. Now that we got a nice even layer on that, that's the key is an even layer. We're going to take our backing off. Now, these do pop out. I'm thinking they're, that you're going to want these to pop out. So let's pop the holes, these out of their holes here. And that's also going to help us to get this peeled off, the, ba the backing on this peeled off.
peeling the backings off of these are re is really hard. So now we got the backing off, now we're going to put it down. Like I said, we're following this inner curve here. Got a little bit of time to move it into position. Make sure you get the edge to edge just right. And then we can roll it on there. Use some of the tissue paper from some of the other issues here to kind of wipe off some of this excess glue. Because the last thing we want to do is when we put the is when we clamp this down, we don't want to have glue get on the board we're using. And just like before, to give this glue a chance to really set. Grab yourself a piece of cardboard to kind of cover it up, and then we're going to clamp it down. Now we got that clamped down, we're going to let that sit for a little bit, and then we're going to come back and continue. So once the well deck sets, you've got two cargo hatches that have to go on. Um, I'm using the sets from my KA kit that I painted white and black. Some people will paint them orange and black. Um, if you're doing the stock kit, you would obviously screw these into the bottom, but since we are not doing this stock, got to put some glue on the... Got to put some glue on them and glue them down. Because it's a pretty big surface, I'm going to do actually a dab of super glue on each one. And obviously, all we're going to do is match the sizes. Put a dab of glue on this one. I will use my thing to spread it out over the part. Once we got the glue all spread out, there's no specific direction for this, so it's just kind of matching it up to the outline and getting it down there. Just making sure it's all straight. Now we'll do the smaller cargo hatch. The reason I'm putting on so much of this glue is the more contact you have the less likely the parts are ever going to come up, which is what we want. We don't want these pieces coming up in a few years. Get a good layer of glue on that, and just like before, we're going to match up the outline and get this part down.
And with that all done, that is it for stage 12. And before we go on to stage 13, remember, the, remember our second trivia question. How high in feet or meters was the Titanic from her keel to the top of the funnels? Was it A, 100 feet or 30 meters, B, 150 feet or 46 meters, C, 175 feet or 53 meters, or was it D, 200 feet or 61 meters? The answer to that is C, 175 feet or 53 meters. So as a little bonus for you, um, that means that our model from keel to top of the funnels will be 10 and a half inches tall or for those watching in other areas 26.5 centimeters and with that let's go on to the next stage all right now before we get kicking off with stage 13 our next question for the titanic trivia is this how many deck officers of the Titanic survived? Was it A, 2, B, 5, or C, 7? You'll get the answer after stage 14, so you got a little bit of time to figure it out. Now with stage 13, however, we are going to continue with the well deck and we're just adding some little details to it. Um, there is one piece that we get with this that we don't need to worry about. I'll show that to you real quick though. So we get this big piece of keel which we don't put onto our ship yet. So set that aside for when we need it. Our focus right now is going to be on the well deck. Um, we got a lot of these small details to put in. So we're going to be doing some gluing and some, some sticking. So let's just get ready for that. So the first parts they want us to put in here are the bollards. And there's four spots for them right along the edge. So... We're going to obviously just put some glue on the bottoms and stick them on like we did on the forecastle. Now that we got those in, we've got to put a piece in the middle, and it's this piece here. Now, keep in mind, when you're doing this, there are three of these that look the same. It's the bigger one that we want. The big one is the one we want for this. We're going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom, and it's going to stick right in the space between the two... Um, the two cargo hatches. And, that's, and while we're letting that set there, um, if you have a question about the color, it's basically an orange with some brown mixed in. Um, I hate to use the term for, especially for my younger viewers, but there's really no better way to describe it. Looks like a cigarette. So the next thing we're putting on is there's two of these little pieces. I don't know if you, if it'll zoom if it'll focus on that for you, but that are gonna go right next to this. So just grab your part, put some glue on the bottom. And 
and there's a very faint hole, like circular shape next to this, so you could very s sort of see where it goes. And it's really up to you how you want it to sit. I don't know if, what the actual way it went on there was, but um. We just gotta get them in there. Now we're gonna continue moving aft, and we've got two of these winches to put in. Uh, they face going this direction. So just like we did on the forecastle, we put our glue on and we put, stick them down. Okay, now that we got those on, we're going to put on these other two vents here. Now. It is very tricky to see it. I don't even know if there's any real way for me to show you on this, but right next to where the cranes go, there is a very faint outline. That's where these pieces are gonna go. are in. Now we are going to leave it there. There is one more step that they show you in the book where you're putting a step on either side here. Um, but I don't think we're going to do that right now because I believe the way I'm doing the model, it's going to actually go on the part that's going to, the bulkhead that's going to be in front here. So with that, the Ford Well Deck, for now, is done, and so is Stage 13. Now, as we start Issue 14, this is going to be the part that we are going to be working with a lot. This is the Officer's Quarters, and we've got a lot of stuff to talk about on this. So, first off, I'm going to keep these the same and just paint them the right colors because, yes, you do get a nice piece of decking that fits perfectly over these pieces, but again, we're using our decking, which is going to need a little bit of work to actually fit. First of all, our decking comes in two pieces. So one part is going to go on here. And the other is going to go there. So we're going to have something like that going on. And we got other parts we're going to have to put into place here. But first, we're going to have to get this to sit flat. So we got to look at this and say what needs to go and what's going to be kept. So from the front end of it, I'm going to keep the lip here on the side so I'm basically gonna keep these side lips but we're gonna shave off every all these parts that come in so let's start with that and just like we did before we're gonna take our razor blade and we're just gonna slowly shave away
Now that we got those off, we're going to talk about the lifeboats. Get that little bit of flexing off there. So now I'm going to talk about these lifeboat holders. I like them. So even though the kit does come with its own, I'm going to use these. The thing we got to check is where these are because we need to make some spaces in this to let those go through so our easiest option is going to be we can use this piece to kind of map it out If we put this down in here, we can actually cut ourselves our hole for the lifeboats. All right, and now we got those off of there. There may need to be a little trimming done. But just doing a dry fit on this. It's fitting in there pretty good. So I'm gonna go finish perfecting the holes I need to make and then we'll take a look at how this can sit on there. So it took a little bit of work. Um, I had to trim off some of the excess right around here and right in the front here. Um, but it will fit down in there nicely once you get everything all trimmed up. So that takes care of that section. Now we gotta look at the back here. Um, because as I said, this comes into two parts and you, you do have to cut these houses out of this piece here, but um, the only thing that's stopping this from going down is this little section here, which is a structure. Um, since it is so small, I am just going to shave it off. see how this piece fits on after I cut out my house piece here it's, the house needs a little work left you may actually need your goggles for this so I'm gonna go get this house piece cut I'm gonna cut this out a little bit and then we'll come back and show how it looks fitted on and there we go we got that piece looking good everything looking good we're not worried I'm not worried about this white section because there is a piece of photo etch that is gonna cover that up now you might think hey we got it good let's go glue it on but wait let's talk about the sides here I want to talk for a moment about these sides specifically the railing and these lights Something is off about it. I don't know if it's a problem with their molds or if it's a problem with the If it's a problem with 
the model itself, but these are not parallel to this part. Like, this lip and the tops of these windows are parallel, but the lights and this bar are not. And we also got, can talk about this door. Now, obviously we're going to have to shave these bars off. And we're going to have to make sure we get this smooth and paint it out. So that it's not, it doesn't look bad. So we're going to have to shave these bars off and replace them with our photo etch ones. And these light fixtures. But since we're going to be shaving off these light fixtures. I think we're going to have to look at making these into actual lights. Now I'm going to talk to you about this door. Now as far as the door goes, there's technically nothing wrong with it. But when you compare it to these photo etch doors here, uh, it could be much better. So we're going to use these doors to do this. So right now, before we even glue any of the decking down on this, we're basically going to shave off all this raised stuff. The rails, the lights, and the door. So, let's use our chisel one, shave these off, and I'll be right back with you when I'm done. So you can see now we've got a smooth surface to work on. Now, what are you going to put on before we paint this up and make it good? Well, first of all, the doors on this are white. So we are going to want to put on our doors first. What about the railing? Um, I believe the railing is brown, so I'm not going to put the railing on yet. We'll put the railing on after we paint this thing. Now we're looking here at our doors, and the way they design these is you can put them on either side to make them work. So, these doors have hinges on, on one side, but they fit on either. So what we're going to have to do first is we're going to have to fold these together. Now this is where this little tool is going to come in handy. Because what we can do with this tool, which is called the bug, is we can fit our piece in there, basically clamp it down, clamp it where I need it to go. And then, once we got it clamped down, we can slide this razor blade under the part. They give Now, they give you this razor blade with it, but you could use pretty much any blade you have. And then you just kind of fold it up at 90 degrees. What that will let us do, is we can take this piece out, and we can glue these two halves together. and make them stick. And there we go, we got a door that we can now put on our we got a door we can go put on our um, officer's quarters. So I'm going to go make the second door, and then we're going to come back and put, and I'm going to put these on our officer's quarters. 
Now, fortunately for us, they had the positions on these doors right. They just didn't look the best. So, we're going to put the doors right where they were on the model before. So, we're going to take one of our completed doors here. Just put some super... Actually, we're going to put the glue onto the model right here where the door was. Just like that. And we're going to stick our door on. You won't have long to mess with it, so make sure you get it in the right spot that you want it. Like that. And now we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Just like that. Now we got our nice doors on. Um, we're going to let this sit and dry. I'm going to talk about the side here a little bit. Um, Titanic purists will know that the window placement is completely, is a little wrong in this section. Uh, I'm not sure what the right placement is. There's a great guy in the Facebook group. His name is Paul Begg. He's done all the research on this thing. He'll know what the right positions are, but basically, um, you basically could cover one of these, drill out another one, do a lot of stuff to it. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I'm not that confident in my skill level yet. But this is your model. You do what you want to do with it. So once that all dries... We can go ahead and spray this with our primer and well after we draw out the holes where i'm going to put the lights we can then go spray this with our primer and with our white and get it ready to get the deck on so the windows are going to be a little bit of a judgment call because i don't have anything definitively saying where they went but i do have this book, which is an excellent resource for Titanic model makers, and if we look at pictures here, you could kind of see where the, or here, you could kind of see, up here, you could see where the lights are going to go, just below the lip of the officer's quarters deck. So if we look at what we had... If we look at the w spots where we had them, I know it's tough to see, but this one and this one are kind of close together. But I'm going to go with that one because it's pretty close to the top of... You know what? Actually, yeah, this is the one I'm going to use to drill out my holes. Now, I'm going with the one millimeter drill bit to drill these holes out. So I'm gonna drill out the one and then we're gonna get, figure out where to put the rest of them. Okay, so now we've got our we've got our piece, um, our officer's quarters looking all nice. I added a few things on this. I put in more doors on the bridge section. Put in these little thing. I put in a uh, these things here. You'll see I drilled these holes out, and I painted the skylights on the officer's quarters skylights brown. 
So we are ready to start putting the the decking on this thing. Same process as always. We're gonna brush on some of our wood glue. I'm actually gonna do this in a couple stages because we have two pieces of decking to put on plus a piece that's gonna go in the middle here. You're gonna want your glue to get right up alongside these houses. So I'm gonna stop it there. We're gonna put on our first uh, deck piece. So we got our piece off here. We're going to go ahead and stick it on. Now, the easiest way we're gonna do this is using the skylight here as kind of your guide piece. get it straight on push it in there and there we go first piece of the deck is on now we got to put the decking on this front section now why we're doing it this way is because we want to know we want to be sure we know just how much um, just where the the rest of the um there's a piece there's a piece for the expansion joint that I will go over in a bit but we want to get that right because we're going to have to what we're going to have to do once we get the expansion joint in is you're going to have to put a line on the actual ship where it goes Get in between the uh, collapsible lifeboat bracers and go all the way to the edges. Especially right where these lifeboat, where the collapsibles go. You want to get all the way to the edge. And this is a good reason why you want to use uh, PVA or wood glue or whatever because unlike super glue, uh, this stuff takes a little bit to dry so You've got time to actually get your glue on, paint it on, and get your pieces right before you're no longer going to be able to. So unlike super glue, this glue can be quite forgiving. Even if you're doing the stock model, I would highly recommend you still use this glue. Do not trust the glue on the pieces as they come. Now that we got that nice and evenly coated on there, we can put our other deck piece on. And just like before, use the house, use this thing as kind of your first focal point. And just slide everything down. You know, you're gonna be pushing stuff in here. Just push stuff in. Make sure you get it nice and smooth and everything gets all pushed down into there. Into these cracks and crevices. other side now push everything down
right, so there we go. We got that on. Now, the first thing we're going to put on with this, I'm going to put some more glue into this section here. And we're going to put the expansion joint in. That's going to cover this section. And if you're using your, um, if you're using the upgrade kit that we are here, the KA one, it'll be part S35. Luckily this one, uh, you don't have to paint anything because it's on the original ship. The expansion joint joint was bronze or brass, but the bronze coloring works for us in this case. So this piece has the advantage of us not having to paint it at all. test fit our expansion joint right here and it fits in there nicely so let's just make sure we got enough glue to keep it on there Expansion joint in. All right, now our expansion joint is in place. Now we got these sections to do. Um, obviously, we got some parts that have to go in those so that they fill up. So the first one, still with, still working with them. Um, the S sheet on this is going to be. S04, so we're working from the f back. That's going to be this piece here painted steel. And it's just going to be like a game of Tetris, fitting it in uh, the directions it, that it's got to go in. So just fit that in there like that, get it into the part. So we fit that piece in there like that. Now the next section comes from our T uh, sprue. That's this one with all these other parts on it. They don't get, they don't actually have labels or anything. This one doesn't actually have a label saying it is T, but this is T. Um, so the first one we're going to do, this one is T14. As you can see, it does kind of have a right angle. It has an angle piece on it, so we're going to get that out. Make sure it's all ready. And it can only go, and it can go either way, but you are going to want it to where these 
are pointing towards the stern. So the bottom of these T sections, let's call them T's, the long, the vertical part of the T points towards the stern. Okay, so we got that part in there. Now we're going to go towards the front. And right here, in this section, we got T O T02. Now, T02 is this piece, and they go in, so it's, they each go in opposite directions, so you just got to find the way it fits, and fit it in there. that piece in clean off some of this excess glue that got on it now that, that piece is in the last section we have is this section right here so our last piece to put in is actually gonna be T12 it says T9 on the instructions but if you actually look at the the picture, um, you can clearly see that it's T12 because T12 has a bigger has a bigger part at the top. And just like before, the bottom of the T is going to face towards the stern. Just like that. Now we got our decking down. Uh, we got our little extra parts on here. So now we're just gonna clamp it down and let it sit until the glue dries. Clamping this part down is gonna be tricky because it has so much sticking up. And you know, it's going out to the side so we're gonna have to be pretty crafty with our clamps. Now it's all clamped up. Once that dries, we'll come in and continue on with stage 14. So now that that's set, we're gonna start putting some very minor details on. And we're gonna put, start putting some details in. The first things we're gonna put in, they, I don't know if you're even gonna be able to see, there they are. There are these little vents, these little covers right here. Um, they're gonna go on these sections which I've colored black with a just a sharpie marker because there's nothing under them. Now normally I would say put the glue on the piece and then we put the piece on but for these little tiny parts I'm gonna actually put the glue onto the model itself. I'm going to very carefully take the grading piece and just set it in there. And 
and then we're going to repeat that one time back here and then the one up front here. those in place our next step is we have grading that's going to go over all of these sections even though these look already graded and yeah it is going to make it difficult to put some of the parts in um we're going to do this anyway and you'll see why now if you look at the grading pieces we get with this kit um this one here has a hole in it and that one goes on looking at the instructions it will go on this one right here which also seems to have a hole in it so we're going to start with that one and i'm going to do this the same way we're going to put the glue on the model and not the part We get that one on we're gonna put the other three on they don't have a specific pattern or order so just put them on however you want and I'll meet you back here when that's done so there we go now we got the those grates on and I like the effect that it creates having a grating above the one they give you on um, built in it just kind of adds a little depth to the model now We've got a bunch of other details to add to this. So let's get all those parts and meet you back here. So we've got quite a few pieces to put on. Um, the first one isn't even in our instructions. It is this piece. And this is a water tank that sits behind the funnel. So this sits actually behind the Ford funnel. So it's going to be in this section here no yes it'll be right in this part here and it goes on it just gonna sit right on the grating so that's how that piece is gonna go on and how do I know this well referring again to Titanic a model makers guide it talks about the fresh water tank and how it was put on there so you have one side with two vents with two pipes the other side has three pipes coming out of it so which direction is the right direction for this to go on that is the good question to ask to get that we gotta go to a website that i would highly recommend called the titanic cad plans this is a very well veritable wealth of information about the titanic that a lot of people wouldn't know about and it covers everything from color guides to facts about the Titanic and it has an entire section talking about the water tank after the first funnel including showing how it looks under the water where we can cl and it shows clearly that the double pipe goes inside the ship goes towards the inner part so now that we know what way this goes on, we can glue it onto this part of the ship.
just got some glue on the part on the contact points and we're sticking it down there and now that water tank is on and now we can actually put the pieces on that are in the magazine so the first piece we're gonna put on is this vent here it's gonna go onto this point back behind the funnel and now the magazine shows it facing in this direction but it's actually supposed to go pointing straight back so we're gonna put it the way it's supposed to go and not the way the instructions say once again just take your glue spread a little bit on the bottom remember with super glue a little bit will go a long way so you don't gotta overdo it and Put it on the part. Some people may ask, why don't you just put the glue on the part? Um, I also like to maintain a little control of my glue. And the more glue you have on there, the more potential for things to go wrong. You could have glue coming out. You could have... You could put too much on. And super glue ha leaves you very little margin for error. So, you know, take it, you know, take it as a grain for, with a grain of salt, but you don't want to put the wrong glue on. Now, our next part is this thing right here. And... This part, you can tell where it goes because if you look on the bottom, you see it's got a T-shape and a circle shape, which is going to fit right in with this section right here. And you always want to put glue uh, where it's going to contact where you're sticking it. They call those contact, we call those contact points. More contact points means a better stick. And again, it's cut to fit the design, so you just follow the design as it's on there. Okay, that's stuck down there. It'll dry on there just fine. There, much better. It wasn't sitting flat because I had cut off a small section on this. So there's a little there's a little piece of the resin on there that you need to cut off before that'll fit on there properly. So keep an eye open for that. Now our next piece is going to be this big boy right here. Uh, you can tell it's going to be this one because it's got the T-shape, but it's also got this section which is going to fit right in there. So now we're going to spread our glue on all the contact points on this. And then we're going to stick it down in there. Just like that. Next we have this part, which also has a piece that comes down. 
So it looks similar to that, but this, but just think of it like this. This piece does, this part has, is small, shorter than this one. This one has this big vent that comes out. This one does not. That's how we know it will write it, what the right one is. And just like its brother, it's going to go right into that hole that's remaining right there. So once again, I'm going to put the glue on. Just like that. And stick it down. If you get it aligned right, it should just fit right into the hole there. Just like that. Now this last piece that they give us to do, it's really tiny in the instructions, and it's even smaller here. I'm going to try to show it to you. Um, see that piece rolling around? That little thing right there? Yeah. We've got to put that piece on right here. It's going to go right in here. Right where this hole is. I highly do not recommend using tweezers to try to put this piece on. Because if you drop it, you will lose it. So to deal with really tiny pieces like this, I recommend you get yourself some of this. It's blue tack. Um, it's basically like putty that you. It's it's the type of stuff you can put on posters to stick them to your walls. What I'm gonna what we're gonna do is I'm gonna stick it stick this piece onto the tack so it's stuck to the tack there. I'm gonna put my glue right on the end right there. And then we're going to guide it into this hole. Now there is no uh, direction on this. It's just one piece, but trying to make it straight. Give that glue a chance to set and then take it off. It's nice and straight. And there you go. The roof, this is it for this stage of the build. I'm going to do one thing that's fun by combining our, by, even though it doesn't tell us to do this, we're going to combine our two, we're going to combine two stages into one here, just for fun. Obviously, I'm talking about the first funnel. We can put that under here and put it into its spot. And I'm going to pull this back for a minute. And you can see there's how it's looking right there. So the officer's quarters is starting to come together nicely. Here, let me take this tape off so we can get the full effect here. So there you go. The officer's quarters uh, is starting to come together. It's starting to get the details on. Um, obviously more details will be coming in, you know, future issues, but for now, that is it for this stage of the build. Now that we're at the end of this stage of the build, it's time for our answer to the third question of Titanic Trivia. So just how many deck officers on the Titanic survived? Was it A, 2, B, 5? Or C, seven. The answer is very sad. It is A, two. Only two deck officers survived the sinking. With that bit of trivia, that ends stage 14, and that ends pack three. So that was it for this part of the build, and what a lot we got done. We're expanding our hull. We're adding some details to our superstructure areas. This is coming along quite nice. Um, 
as you can see our next our next issue we're actually going to be adding another section to the side of our hull as well as putting the putting a couple of our lifeboats on but I will be using different lifeboats than you see in the pictures it's gonna be quite a lot we got six weeks to wait before the next shipment comes in so to pass that time your final question for this first Titanic trivia what was the name of J. Bruce Ismay's nemesis who coined the phrase J. Brute Ismay? Was it A. William Randolph Hearst? B. David Sarnoff? C. J. D. Rockefeller? Or D. G. Marconi? The answer will be next time on the Model Frontier. Mm -hmm.